Hi, I'm Dr. Kaplan from Helios Telemedicine for Men. In a prior video, I talked about how exercise affects testosterone levels in most of us. Today, I want to address how the regimens that extreme exercisers, such as professional athletes and triathletes, can affect their health and testosterone levels. The information in this second exercise and testosterone video mainly came from the paper cited on the accompanying text. In brief, intense exercise training can result in development of low testosterone in men and can reach levels of clinical significance. Exercise-induced reductions in testosterone can be divided into two categories. The first is an acute temporary phenomenon that happens with overtraining syndrome, the female athlete triad, or relative energy deficiency in sports, and must be treated as they have severe immediate health and performance consequences and may have long-term side effects. The second class is a chronic phenomenon of training-induced adaptation as in the exercise hypogonadal male condition, and it is not sure whether this even needs to be treated or prevented as there are no apparent health issues. Keep watching this video or go to www.heliostelemedicine.com for more information. You can book an appointment with me if you are in one of my licensed states. It has been known for decades that extreme exercise training can cause testosterone levels to fall and remain low, and this can lead to symptomatic male hypogonadism. This depends on the intensity and duration extreme athletes train, their energy and water intake, and the amount of, that the stress from exercise raises their cortisol levels. Prolactin and other inhibitory factors also increase. These interfere with the stimulation of the testes and with the testes' ability to make testosterone at all. This may result in the overtraining syndrome or relative energy deficiency in sports, syndromes that occur in men and women and are like the female athlete triad in women. The triad includes reduced fertility and changes in the menstrual cycle, bone mineral loss and the risk for osteoporosis, and altered nutritional intake. In men, overtraining syndrome is defined as symptomatic low testosterone with its health risks, reduced fertility, and a risk for bone loss and osteoporosis. We all have an idea of what extreme intensity and duration are, and we know that dehydration can severely affect athletic performance, but what about nutritional energy availability? It's well known that many elite athletes have poor eating habits before, during, and after exercise, but few realize that this can lead to a condition called low energy availability. Our bodies work on energy, and the amount that we can generate is limited. So, if we subtract the amount of energy that we burn with exercise from the amount that we produce from food, we get the amount of energy that is available to do everything else our bodies have to do. If the exercise energy burn is high, like in the extreme trainer, and the energy intake is low due to poor eating habits, then the amount of energy left for all our metabolic processes can be critically low. This can result in the suppression of the testosterone control circuit and secondary low testosterone levels. While this can be reversed with weight gain, the return of the testosterone levels may be variable and slow. So low energy availability can lead to an adverse metabolic syndrome called relative energy deficiency in sports. It can impair performance so badly that it can be season ending for the affected athlete. But the news isn't all bad. In 2005, Hackney and Associates described exercise hypogonadal male condition and defined it as separate from relative energy deficiency in sports as while these athletes will have resting testosterone levels of at least 25 to 50% lower than expected for age, there is no loss of performance or fertility and no loss of weight or bone density. This usually occurs in athletes who have done extreme daily endurance training for many years, and they believe that it is likely an adaptive phenomenon. The total energy availability is limited. So as the exercise energy expenditure increases, there is less available energy for other physiologic processes. But in these lucky athletes, the body responds by limiting non-essential functions, reducing inflammatory responses, adrenaline production, sympathetic nervous system response, and testosterone production. 
making a new lower set point for the athlete's normal testosterone level. This may actually result in reduced risks for diabetes and heart disease. It is also in line with the fact that hunter-gatherer men with their much more strenuous long-term daily activities have lower resting testosterone levels than North American men. While relative energy deficiency in sports must be treated, it is unclear if the exercise hypogonadal male condition does. After all, if there is no loss of performance or other metabolic deficits, why mess around with it and risk increasing the possibilities of diabetes and heart disease? So what can extreme athletes do to protect themselves? The World Anti-Doping Agency has pages long lists of banned substances that athletes must know about. So that leaves concentrating on getting athletes adequate nutrition, behavioral counseling, and adjusting training programs to avoid low energy availability. So in summary, intensive exercise training can result in the development of acute syndromes like overtraining syndrome, female athlete triad, or relative energy deficiency in sports and must be treated as they have severe immediate health and performance consequences and may have long-term side effects. A smaller subset of elite long-term daily endurance athletes may develop the training-induced adaptation exercise hypogonadal male condition and is not sure whether this even needs to be treated as there are no apparent performance or health issues. Please visit my website at www.heliostelemedicine.com to watch videos on unhealthy weight and low testosterone or to read our informational blogs or frequently asked questions. If you live in Texas, New York, Florida, or Missouri and have questions about having an extreme exercise syndrome, you can schedule an appointment with me on the website so we can get started on your journey to a healthier you. You can also check us out at Helios Telemedicine for Men on Facebook and Instagram or at, at Helios Telemedicine on YouTube. Thanks for your time and attention. Bye for now.